So during the time of talking about physical assault, I am not an expert, and I certainly do not work in any women's liberty, women's studies, or women's project group. I am a man that is very sensitive to the concept of rape because I taught long ago self-defense, and I should still have marvelously in my possession a bunch of carbonless forms that are a part of my self-defense course. I purposely kept them for more than 20 years. So anyone that stole them should go to jail for the thought process of intellectual property theft. And Lily, theft of property, possessions. But what I really want to talk about was the purpose of that self-preservation course. And it was trying to teach people how to walk, how to behave, how to talk, how to interact in a way that would give them more self-confidence. Or more importantly, would give them more social space. or so what we're now calling social distancing. Because physical assault still can happen. But nowadays, people are getting so savvy and technologically savvy about the concept of physical assault that they are forgetting what types of things are included in physical assault. Molestation and mutilation are very much a part of physical assault. It is a form of, of personal misconduct, of social misfit, and literally of legal and lawful abuse. What I mean by legal abuse is that you're trying to legalize something that is unlawful. What I mean by a legal abuse is that you're trying to use a law to protect you and it won't. But when we talk about mutilation, let's talk about what belongs to an individual. Their hair, their beard, their bodies, their skin. That belongs to an individual. It does not belong to a police officer. It doesn't belong to a medical doctor. It doesn't belong to a nursing group. And certainly a person's loins and naked body never belongs to the public view.